Welcome to what is hopefully our last video and needed guidance for the 2021 Douglas County Lamb Show. While we're excited to be able to do this in person, we also know that the realities of the day just mean that we've got some certain things we have to accommodate for. But we are definitely committed to wanting to be able for our youth to show these projects that we've spent months on so far. We've been learning, we've been practicing, we've been overcoming challenges, and uh, we are now looking at the show itself. And so what this next couple minutes will do is walk through what the show is going to look like for us. So we look at, we're going to talk about what June 4th, that Friday looks like for move in. Let's talk about what Saturday, the day of lamb show is going to look like. And then also a last little check in on what is after lamb show going to look like for us. So before we get to lamb show, the first thing to do is review the exhibitor information packet. It is 13 pages long. It was emailed out and it's been posted online the douglas county livestock association page at dclivestock.org as well as douglas county 4-h there is a lot of information in there for sure because we want to make sure everybody has all the information there normally is a lamb show premium book that has the rules and all that we have the parts for the market auction uh, program that are required so those pieces are in there plus the communication so everybody has this reference to go back to and see what does this year look like so this video is going to talk through this uh but that packet is the um the official gospel here so if i say something in this that goes off of what that packet uh had on there the packet is what you refer to so my apologies there if there's any uh confusion and question but hopefully there's not but uh if there is a discrepancy refer to the packet we're preparing our lamb for showing. So we've got a final shear happening, we're fitting, we're cleaning, we're prepping, we're ready to go. And we've communicated to family, friends, and supporters how this lamb show will work. And uh, especially after we've watched this video is you have a better idea. So let's talk about Friday, June 4th. And so on this Friday, we're going to our lamb weigh-in and our bet check will happen from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. That allows us to get these lambs in the barn, get our weights, get our classes, and get information ready to go for Saturday. And to do this, you'll be driving in the main gate, just like a typical lamb show morning for those you've done it before. And you're gonna head right up to the corner of the pavilion, if you can see my mouse, and we'll follow along around the building to the back to the loading dock there. And once you get to that point that's there, that loading dock, and wait till we're indicated that we're ready to go here. So again, we don't get a crowd of lambs. Typically there's a long line there, not gonna be the case, uh, but we'll be working our way through this and we've definitely got a larger time than normal. But once we're ready, we'll give you the go ahead and the volunteers there will have you unload the youth and their lamb and go ahead and pull out. And you can pull in front of the floral building. You can uh, just uh, pull all the way around. You can go out to the museum parking lot, uh, wherever works for you and where space is allowed. Uh, there's gonna be that check in there. This is where our check in is coming into the pavilion. Uh, we'll be always be having people sign in and know when they left too for our screening and contact tracing. The uh, things that we're just required to do is, is good guests of our hosts there at the fairgrounds and of our 4-H and FFA programs. And then when they're in the, in the pavilion, that's an inside space. So we do need to be wearing masks again as we're good guests of uh, the fairgrounds here for this. And following the rules, they're laid out for all our schools for FFA programs and by OSU Extension that our county extension groups and 4-H needs to follow when we're inside the buildings. We really appreciate you helping out with that. Um, so this goes smoothly. We want this focus to be on our programs, our youth, uh, our lambs and the show not on having to be uh, the police on these things. So we really appreciate your help in making sure we can continue to do this. Whoops, let's look at step five. So vet check like normal. So uh, please again, read the guidance there on what we're looking for and what needs to be true. But obviously we don't want open sores, sore mouth, prolapsing lambs, those things that would give a bad view of animal agriculture would not be a quality for going into the food supply. Your animal should have your market animal tag that was put on and weigh in in April, and you should have a scrapey tag that's required. Again, check out those rules that are in that packet referred to earlier. When you go through weigh in, there'll be a tri ply weight slip that you'll get handed, and that'll have your weight on it. Your lamb has to be 100 plus pounds. If you're under 100 pounds, there they could be shown as a feeder lamb. That'll happen first thing Saturday morning. You'll be part of the group A group. When it comes to showmanship, you'll have your own feeder lamb class. It'll happen uh, early that morning. And after that, you're released to go. Or you can just take it home Friday night. That is your call on that one. But we definitely want to give the option to show and exhibit that project, even if we didn't make weight with it and it cannot be part of the market auction sale. Then we're going to move to our pen. 
Uh, we should have betting and tack in. We can do that this time too. But pins will be marked by Wednesday night. And I'm not sure what time yet, but by Wednesday night. So you're welcome to bet early. Um, bring that stuff in and do it. It could be one or two people. It could be several people. You're welcome to put up a club or chapter sign. Would remind you that the public is not going to be coming through. Buyers and bidders will not be, be able to come through the barns in the normal fashion. So a lot of decorating, uh, while it can be a lot of fun, maybe isn't the best uh, plan for this year. So save that energy enthusiasm for the next time when we get to get back to doing this in a normal fashion. But definitely to put up a sign to everybody knows where you're at here in the barn and represent a little bit uh, is certainly welcome. But that's our guidance for that. But you could be in on Thursday to do that. You could be on Friday to do that before the three o'clock weigh-in starts. And then we'll need to clear a bit before that. So please don't be in there right till three o'clock. We need to clear the space. We can get that weigh-in going and manage our number of people in the barn as it happens. So if you would uh, be as efficient as possible, that just really helps that process go smoothly. We don't have people waiting out in line in the trucks because we've got too many people in the barn all at once. So it's a matter of coming in, going through weights, getting your lamb uh, put away and uh, taken care of. And then also um, dropping off feed for it and doing those things. And so that lamb needs to eat three times while it's there at the fairgrounds probably. We've got that Friday evening. And maybe you're going to feed it after you weigh in and uh, take care of it there. And that could be taken care of. But Saturday morning and Saturday evening will be by your group leader or your advisor. And so do be sure to weigh, mark a bag and mark those accordingly. Talk to your leader advisor what their expectations are for that. And then your lamb's going to need a feed pan it's ready to go and definitely a water bucket in the pens, watered, taken care of. And again, Friday, you might take care of that before you leave, or maybe your, your leader's going to do that later that day if you were one of the earlier ones to weigh in. And then, but Saturday morning and Saturday evening, those leaders need to take care of that most likely in order to get that done and take care of those lambs for Saturday. Once we've got that lamb tucked away, we've got it fed, just head right over to the main show ring that's in the pavilion. And that's where registration will be. So you'll bring that weight slip that you got in way in. Um, you'll also turn in a pre-written thank you for your buyer. Now, we don't know who that is yet, but we know we're going to have a buyer. And we know we can say some authentic and sincere things of thanks for that person who supports you and supports this program. So put those thoughts down there. It just won't be addressed to anyone yet. Do a nice job on that. And you can see guidance uh, sent out by Lori uh, with 4-H about good guidance on what to put in a thank you and to make that happen. That thank you will go with their buyer placard we'll mention later here at the end. There will also be stall cards there. So go ahead and grab one of those, get it filled out, and get it hung up uh, above your gate so we can find lambs later on. It's not necessarily this one. This is the one that shows up when you Google 4-H livestock stall card on Google Images. At that point, you're ready to head out for the night. As soon as we have everybody weighed in, we're going to sort our classes based on weight. That is a change from the past. They've been preset in the uh, before. This is more in line with what most shows are, the vast majority of shows are doing, honestly. And so it also fits in better with what um, kind of judges' expectations and their management of their lambs as they select them. They're more even in their weights in the class. So once we have that, we'll be sending those classes out for market and then also showmanship I'll talk about in a moment. And we'll send that out to the email list of how you registered. We will... Send that out information with uh, when it's ready on Remind. I'll mention Remind here in a moment. And also, I'll post it to the DCLA website at dclivestock.org under the Lamb Show section. And we'll do that, have that by 9 p.m. that night is our target. And we might have it sooner if everything goes smoothly and uh, we're good to go on that. Now, to understand how Saturday is going to work and what we're going to be dividing up on Friday night, is that we're going to have five groups that are rotating through. And again, there's certain parameters we have to keep in order to be guests there at the fairgrounds for 4-H to be able to follow their rules set by OSU Extension and uh, the rules, again, the schools play under. And so these five groups are going to be broken up depending upon the weights of your lamps. And we know there will be chapters and clubs. They'll be spread out throughout the day, and there might be families accordingly. And we, we totally understand that. We also know that sometimes the logistics just um, dictate to us how we need to make this work to make sure it does work and we have this opportunity. So you can plan right now a little bit where you're going to be in this day, kind of by looking at your lamb a little bit. The lightest lambs um, that do make weight are going to be in group A, and then we're just going to be dividing up evenly throughout until we get to whatever the, the fifth group, the top 20% on weight, are in group E, and those will be the heaviest lambs. So if your lamb's running closer to the 100-pound mark right now or maybe closer to the 150-pound mark right now, 
you kind of know the what part of the day is. And in the middle, it'll just depend on how lambs break out and wait. But hey, we're used to a real long hot day or rainy day, depending on the year, lamb show at the fairgrounds. So that's a day we should have committed and, and know we are going to be utilizing that uh, to get the things done that we, we want to do there. I mentioned Remind a minute ago. And so that information is in the packet on how to add yourself and some guidance there. And those remind uh, updates will be sent out and you'll just get them via text or you can get them from, as a push notification on a smartphone uh, or it could be via email and all the directions are there on this page. This is just a screenshot of it. There's more information in that packet that was emailed out for the exhibitor info. So that covers what it looks like when we are there on Friday and actually, you know, Friday has some steps and then we get to Saturday and Saturdays uh, in some ways is that's the big day. But there's really just three things we need to know that we're going to do. And uh, the schedule will drive us for that as we walk through it. And as we put this together, our goal was that once you came to the fairgrounds, that for the vast majority of our participants, we could do our pre preparation, our showing for confirmation and showmanship, and then be able to take off for the day. And we had a great experience doing that, and we didn't have to come back and forth. Now, a few people will, and this is where success uh, means that you get to come back and we will talk about that in just a second here. So when we come in on Saturday, we're going to be coming in, the fairgrounds gates will be closed. So any equipment you need to bring in needed to come in on Friday or Thursday evening, uh, even. So if you're bringing a fitting stand or anything else, uh, like your shavings and stuff, feed, that should all come in ahead of time when you can drive in because on Saturday, the uh, facility will be closed down. We're going to have kids walking through with lambs and all that. And so that's a safety factor, just like at fair, we, we wouldn't want to have to deal with. So we uh, will be just walking in for that. And if you're worried about leaving equipment overnight, you could pack it in that morning. You just have to, to carry it or you could chain it up uh, if that'd be the case. We're we'll coming in the man gate that's down by the RV uh, park gate down here. We'll be parking in the south lot below the river arena. Uh, big reason why we're doing that and why wouldn't there be, there's a COVID-19 drive-through vaccination clinic going on that day, uh, found out just a few days ago. And so they'll be coming in the main gate and just turning and driving. So it won't affect us at all. But when you get there, there might be cars coming in and you'll see signs saying COVID-19 vaccinations drive this way. You'll also see signs, they'll say 4-H and FFA head this way. And it'll be really straightforward for us. So it shouldn't foul us up at all. And there'll be traffic directors there for that uh, vaccination event. And we'll have a couple of our people out to make sure we're okay. But just head on down to the south parking lot, park there, and walk yourself in. At the RV gate is where we are um, checking in at. All right there, okay? And so when I say checking in, um, we'll have a schedule. And you'll know this Friday night of when uh, your time is to show up at the fairgrounds. And in that day that we're here, we really have, I said there'd be three things. And we have an hour for each one scheduled. We've got an hour scheduled for kids to show up and fit and prep their lamb. And some kids will use that whole hour and some kids won't. It just depends on your goals, your focus, what you've done ahead of time and you have ready to go. You don't have time to clip your lamb that morning, but you definitely should have time to, if you need to wash or spot wash, to blow out legs, to prep um, legs, get all those final touches in there. And it ain't normally a, a day at lamb show that morning, it's it's a pretty tight schedule. So actually we hope that this gives enough time um, and even maybe more so in a little bit if you used to be in class one to do that and uh, to be ready to go. And so when you arrive um, and do that is when the schedule starts. And so once you know what group you're in based upon the weights that I mentioned earlier, then you know what your start time looks like and then you're just rolling. So if I'm in group C, and I'm showing up at nine o'clock to fit my lamb. Uh, then at 10 o'clock, I'm showing my lamb in confirmation. And 11 o'clock, my classes start for showmanship. And that hour block, all that's gonna happen in. And uh, we're pretty confident that we, uh, if everybody's there on time and we're rolling well, we've got the time to, to keep us on schedule here. And I will just mention that no group will ever start earlier than what's indicated. Confirmation for a group, will, if we're ahead of schedule 15 minutes, we're gonna have a 15 minute pause at the end of group B before group C begins. Totally okay. In fact, it's anticipated a little bit that we'll have a little bit of this gap time uh, just so that way transitions are easy. Nobody's racing rust, uh, and hustling so much that we're getting all out of sorts or, or getting confused. So that's the case there. 
and uh, we might get bumped back if we have some big blowups and train wrecks, but we don't expect um, to have too much of those. And past history tells us that we can we can do this. And think about all that we used to do um, ship confirmation in the morning, showmanship in the afternoon, and still made the sale that night. So when you get to the gate, that's where tracing and screening happens. So uh, our exhibitor checks in, and their plus one checks in. The, whoever the adult that's with them. Um, participant, and again, we're limited to one per, has been communicated. You'll receive your wristband at that time Saturday morning, and they're color-coded. So Group A all has the same color, Group B has the same color, C, et cetera. Our main, each club has one main club leader, and every FHA chapter has one FHA advisor. They'll have their own band color because they will be able to be there for the full day to support all their students, no matter what class they're in. So they have that guidance and support and know what's going on as well. When we get through the gate, we come in the pavilion. Please come in the south uh, west corner door. It'll be marked. It's right here. It's uh, and then you're in, and you're able to get your lamb. We're not showing in the pavilion because that allows us to transition in and out and not have to the same concern as we under those limits of how many can be in there at a certain time. So we're not going to be hanging out in there, but it's going to make it easy. So at any time you need to go in to grab something, whether it's your lamb or you've got to go back to grab something from the pavilion, we're not going to have to worry about having too many people in the space at one time there. And so that's where we're going to be. That day is going to start. So those the no matter when you show up, those last three things are true. The day starts though with leaders feeding lambs. So we bagged those up. We left them there, and our club uh, leaders and our FA advisors were asking to get that start at 6 a.m. And that might vary a little bit, but we do need to start clearing spaces out in barns so their exhibitors can come in. And so knowing that there's a lot of lambs and we set up every pen we possibly could and big thanks to everybody else showed up the other weekend but we uh are set up there so that we're trying to get as many lambs single pinned as possible which makes feeding way easier and we totally get that there might be a few that you might have one or two double pinned just the way that it works out and if that's the case apologize in advance and hopefully you've got in your group you can coordinate and say hey here's a couple lambs that either they live together their siblings whatever we can make this work Worst case, um, we're having to tie and separate when we feed, and we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So hopefully, we're going to be okay where we're almost uh, every lamb its own pin, and it's good to go. If uh, your club or chapter has eight or more lambs, that club leader at 6 a.m. when they show up and they'll have their own wristband is welcome to bring one other person with them to help with that, because that is a lot of lambs to take care of and fill waters and all that. If you have 16 or more, they can bring two extra. So. We know what's registered. Um, we know what weighed in the night before, so this is real easy arithmetic um, in terms of that. And then again, we'll need those additional help to, to be out by seven when those first groups come in because we just uh, are trying to do our due diligence on keeping track of who was there and then we've got our numbers in good shape and we're having a smooth day this way. So your leader took care of that and then you arrive. And it, we're asking, don't arrive at the gate any more than 15 minutes earlier than your fitting time. So if you're in the group B and you're supposed to start fitting at eight o'clock, you can show up to that gate at 745, uh, no problem. Just we won't start letting anybody in before that. And if you're supposed to be there at 8 and you don't show up till 830, uh, then you do. But that just cuts down the amount of time you have to fit. So being on time really helps and making that happen. You're going to head to the pavilion. You'll get your lamb. And uh, there's that marked entrance. And again, in the pavilion is an inside space. So we need to have masks on. And once you have your lamb and you're situated, you can head to the cattle barn to wash and fit. We've got the wash racks over there and all set to go. So with the wash racks open, and you might wash your lamb, you might not. Again, talk with your club leader, talk with, uh, make your plans. What do I need to do uh, in towards to have my lamb ready for confirmation in that hour? You know that, or if you don't know, learn and find out talking to your advisor and leader, how should I approach this? What should my plan be that morning? But the wash racks will be open for those who need and want it. You'll have a designated club chapter area in the barn which you could have put your fitting stand in the night before if you wanted to, and it can chained up. Um, again, we, we can't guarantee that who doesn't or does come through. So please be diligent about that and just uh, take care of your things. I wouldn't lay it, leave it laying around. The cattle barn is an outdoor space because of how open it is. So masks are only required in that space if social distance cannot be maintained. So if we've got three kids all working on a lamb really close quarters or a leader and a, a, a student or youth, then follow the rules on that, please. But that's an outdoor space. And when we are outdoors, both for 4-H and our schools in the county right now, um, as long as social distance can be maintained, masks are not required. So please help us out with following that. 
make sure you check the rules out. And again, it's in that packet about if you, there's any limitations or questions on what's allowed or not allowed when it comes to fitting lambs. And at the end of that hour, when our hour ends, the next group's going to be able to come in. We'll need to clear the barn. So everybody that, if it, you're in gold group on your wristband, then you're out so the next group can come in and uh, have their time to make that happen. And you'll be heading over to confirmation. We are doing confirmation classes in Douglas Hall in terms of just needing spaces and doing that. It's kind of might bring you up short and say, uh, hang on, where are we doing it? Uh, but heck yeah, we are. And so we'll have a pin, uh, the show ring set up inside there. It's no problem to be in it on that surface. Um, we come through the flat, the south doors where there's no steps, so it's easy entrance there. The show ring will be shavings, and it'll be set up in there. And uh, because it's a, that flat, smooth concrete surface, that's not adequate enough to set lambs up on for sure and brace. So we're going to be laying down rubber matting underneath there and uh, underneath two side uh, there. If you've ever been to shows that have to do these inside places, this is what you do. And uh, we'll make sure that those ring stewards and the judge, when they stop lambs to set up, you'll be on top of that rubber matting. So grip, foot grip won't be a problem or anything like that. We want to make sure we got a good opportunity to brace there. And we're not slipping and sliding around. So that's what that will uh, be inside that ring there. It is an indoor space. So coming in, we need both our youth and the person, uh, uh, the adult that's with them to have their mask on, please. Just like normal, our top two in every class will return for the uh, the end. Our champion set will be in at 1.30, so be there at 1.30. We'll stage up outside and then bring in first place, and then uh, most likely bring in second place there um, from whichever class that, that champion comes from is probably what that will look like. More details today of, but just know the top two will need to return back at 1.30 to do, be ready for there, and that's mentioned in the handout in that packet. All our classes are planned for confirmation to be live streamed via the Douglas County Lamb Show Facebook page. So you can check that out, barring any technical difficulties, of course, would be the thing that would stop us. But uh, we were able to do that for FFA Summer Stock Show last year and uh, hope that will be able to be the case so everybody can see what's going on and uh, hear the judge and, and hear results and all that in real time as the day goes. Then once you're done with confirmation, We'll be moving down to showmanship in the River Arena. And again, we will never begin showmanship sooner than what is scheduled. So if we have a little bit of gap time in between, that's okay. We could be outside. We can head back into the uh, pavilion to grab something if we need to. We keep our lamb fresh, whatever needs to happen there. Um, so we'll be good to go. It is an inside space, just like I mentioned. We're going to have two show rings in there with two judges. And those two judges will be dividing up the age groups like we always have had. We don't know these classes yet because it's going to be based on your weights, but that group B, they'll have some, most likely have some seniors in there, some intermediates and some juniors. And we'll divide those classes up accordingly. Class sizes might fluctuate a little bit throughout the day. We know that's going to happen. That's just the, the nature of the beast when we do it this way. But this also allows it for we're not um, trying to jostle and keep people in and out and running them back and forth. This way, everybody gets to be able to uh, show and compete uh, in showmanship in as fair as possible manner. We will be, because we don't know those classes till after weights, that will come out Friday night as well. And uh, that shouldn't be a big deal because you know it's gonna follow confirmation no matter what. This is how it's gonna work. And you know, top two or more, depending on the judge's preference there, those are gonna return at 3 p.m. is what we have set for division runoffs and we'll have an overall champion drive like we normally would at Lamb Show. We'll just be done a little bit earlier because we've been running showmanship concurrently at the same time as we were doing uh, our confirmation. Once you're done with showmanship, you return your lambs to the pen and you're ready to depart. We are gonna open up the gates again between four and five, but then everybody stops moving around and we're safe to do so. So if you need to come in and get fitting stands, if you need to haul out anything else, we'll get the gate open so you can drive it in and do so. Again, just uh, let's be uh, uh, efficient in this and safe as you're doing that. And uh, we do are gonna have everybody out by 5 p.m is what we'll need to do so we can uh, transition to our next activity and have that. And again, that evening, leaders and advisors, please speed, and we'll have the same accommodation for those that need a couple extra people uh, based on your group size. Same rules as the morning, please. And we'll have everybody out by five. So we might be feeding a little earlier for some of those lambs, but I'm sure they'll be okay. And then that night, we'll have our auction. All the information about this is already posted on the Douglas County Livestock page, uh, dclivestock.org, and it's been sent out, so won't recap that but that's how that evening will look. Um, we're excited 
to get that information out. So please communicate about ways to be there in person or to attend online and the registration information is all on there on how to do that. They can also support through add-ons and that information is posted as well. We, uh, the logistics of being able to have our youth at our auction, I'm really looking forward to when we get back to the point where this is the real deal and how it's supposed to be and how we want and any good ideas we get from this, great. But otherwise, back where it's uh, our more regular shows and we're able to have our youth through the auction, I'm excited to see that. That just can't happen this year because of the logistical needs and requirements of, of 4-H, of, of FFA, and of our hosts there at the fairgrounds. So in order to make the most of it, this is uh, how we're going to roll for this year. We appreciate your understanding on that. And please help to communicate just uh, the factors beyond our control. And we are doing our best to get the most out of this day as a possible. And I'm looking forward to having a good show in person there with all of our 4-H and FFA youth uh, there at the fairgrounds on Saturday. After Lamb show, this part's really short. So uh, we ask you to drop off those thank yous. And those are going to be sent and mailed with the placards uh, this year. Again, just uh, limitations of how many people can be at the office and how things are fluctuating still on rules at our OSU extension where normally we pick those things up. So this is how we did it for fair last year. We'll do it one more time uh, for this Lamb show, hopefully. But we'll be mailing those pre-written thank yous. Of course, you are welcome and encouraged to drop off a thank you right afterwards to that buyer um, that's written in person. There's nothing at all wrong with them receiving two from you. And so I know my students, that'll be their um, encouragement and direction to, uh, to show, express that thanks and get that to them. And then when placards are sent out, then checks will also, and money's collected and all our buyers pay in, our uh, checks will be mailed out also to our exhibitors or distributed depending on what's needed. So the plan for that right now is the case. If you have questions after this, uh, please reach out through your club leaders and advisors. You can also email Lori um, at her email address is right there. And, and of course, you've got emails from her. She's done a ton of work getting things out and communicating. We really appreciate that. There is just so many different uh, pieces of information that we all need. And it takes a little bit to digest. So even this video is way longer than I normally prefer to do by any means. But I didn't want to chop it up and make it confusing. So if you had to pause um, to uh, hit the restroom or to pop popcorn, no problem whatsoever. But if there are those questions, please reach out about that. Otherwise, we're really looking forward to a great show and a great experience for everybody and uh, really setting it up well. We appreciate everybody's help in making this go um, and abiding by the timelines, the expectations and our guidance. And of course, again, check that packet and read through that uh, now that we've done this kind of talk through so that you've got a good understanding of what this will look like. So with all that said, we'll see you next Friday night for weigh-in. We'll see you Saturday for shows. And uh, till then, do a great job getting that lamb ready for the 2021 Douglas County Lamb Show.